Here in the heart of November, it's the return of college basketball. Inside Exact Tech Arena here at the Stephen C. O'Connell Center in beautiful Gainesville, Florida. The Gators, preseason ranked number eight, ready to take their first big bite. As you're watching the SEC on ESPN, and Gardner Webb's in town for the season opener out of the Big South. Alongside of Brooke Weisbrod, I am Roy Philpott, and the star, the preseason All-SEC performer, is Kayvon Allen, and Brooke, he's back for his junior campaign. First team All-SEC last year. He's improved on his playmaking and his defense, and this year, he's going to be looking at a lot more time at the point guard slot. We know Kayvon can score 14 a game last season, but now what can he do to create for his teammates? Take a look at our starting lineups. Garner Webb picked fifth in the preseason Big South media poll and led by David Epiani, the redshirt junior, from right up the road in Orlando, Florida, preseason all-conference. Twelve and a half points a game coming in. And for the Gators, Jalen Hudson, a transfer from Virginia Tech, and Igor Kulichov, the transfer from Rice, will team up with Kayvon Allen in the backcourt for perhaps one of the top shot-making teams in the SEC. Well, a rowdy crowd on hand here at Zach Tech Arena, and we are just about set and ready to go. Carl Hess, our veteran official, directing traffic already in the opening tap, controlled by the Gators, and there's a dunk to Kayvon Allen. Talk about a way to start off your season. Less than four seconds, we've got an alley-oop from the Florida Gators. Hang Bull on tight. Bulldogs coming in at 0-1, lost at Miami Friday night in the paint. Shot is off, offensive glass. Laster can't corral it. Gators on the move, and this is where they expect to be more lethal this season. Brooke, they want to space the floor, drive and dish, and perhaps hit more threes than a year ago. They hit 12 the other night against Tampa, so you can expect 25 to 30 attempts per game from the Gators, and this is their specialty. High low action, and with a basket, Kiberius Hayes. Good spacing and patience, and especially after the opening tip. You got 95 miles an hour to the basket. Next possession, hey, let's slow it down and get a good shot. I like the discipline. Leading score for Gardner Webb's David Affiani, rejected by Hayes. Kulichov, short. Igor Kulichov averaged more than 18 points per game. First team all-conference USA at Rice a season ago. Brookie shot nearly 50% from three as well. well. He is deadly, and he's a guy that just wants to get better. Every team he's been to, Arizona State, Rice, and now Florida. He's just been in the gym constantly. Let's take another look at this play. Now you see why the positioning was so important. Off the tip, the alley-oop. And Kayvon Allen, who's got lots of bounce. 39 and a half inch vertical for this young man. He made that look easy. And now checking in for the first time tonight, Chris Chioza, the senior from Memphis. Rookie suffered a sprained AC joint several weeks back. He was a game time decision, and he'll come off of Mike White's bench tonight. Well, good news for the Gators, the early part of this season, Chioza healthy enough to give it a go. Kulichov off the mark. Roy, you saw Kulichov in here an hour before practice and shoot around even began taking more, more shots. He's certainly trying to get those kinks worked out, maybe those first game nerves, right? Doesn't matter how much experience you have. First day is the first day. Inside, Laster off the glass for the first points of the night for Gardner Webb. Good job by Laster, that 6'6 body to get inside position and just use his footwork to get closer. In and out for Allen. Laster controls off the glass. Two point advantage for the Gators. Preseason pick second in the SEC, which stands to be an improved conference this year on the hardwood. Laster. The pretty jump hook in the paint. Good job by Kulichov to stay with and just contest the shot. But better finish. Laster looks comfortable in those last two possessions. Three minutes in, tied at four. 
Beautiful ball movement for the Gators. Allen attacking. And he'll shoot two. Now Florida has been aggressive here in the early going and impressive. As you see Mike White beginning his third season. Successful stint at Louisiana Tech. Former Ole Miss standout in Oxford in the late 1990s. Foul went against D.J. Laster. That's his first. What Mike White has done here has been so impressive. 48 wins in his first two seasons. It's the fourth most by any SEC coach. John Calipari leading that bunch. And just impressed with the way that he's able to be intense and deliver his message without yelling. Well, that's At least when we were around. Well, I didn't say right. anything else. Yeah, it's something he's going to have to do because by all accounts, his team has plenty of returning experience, some of it at different schools, but not a lot of vocal players. And right. so that's going to be an ongoing story, I think, this year for Florida basketball. Well, that's an ongoing story in, in sports right now. Yeah. College athletes, being so used to their phones, are not talking enough. So that's a social media conversation, you're saying? I think it's a social conversation, period, with people. Allen off the mark, Kulichov. Puts it in and a chance for three. Well, he can shoot at Brook, and he's got this certain level of toughness. He can also rebound as well. Yeah, Kulichov is, is going to help out wherever he can. He's he's going to be a role guy. He doesn't have to be the star shooter where he was at Rice. So now he comes to a bigger program and says, hey, I knew who I'm playing with. Better talent, better competition. Where can I fit in, guys? How can I help? Now, you mentioned his arrival at shoot-around earlier today. It was scheduled for 2.30. He was here almost before 1 o'clock getting shots up from distance. I feel undisciplined. I was across the street getting lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Allen and Kulichov check out. A couple of substitutes in, including DeAndre Baller, the freshman from Atlanta, and a member of the ESPN 100 in the last recruiting cycle. 8-4, Florida out in front, a foul on the inbounds. As Keith Stone picks up his first. Get a look at some pressure from the Gators. Your defense is such a part of Mike White's philosophy here. It's stifling the way that they're able to stay in front of the ball, the way that they're able to help. And as that communication gets better on this team, your defense gets better. Right now, it's Chios of the one, giving out assignments vocally. Effiani with a bounce. Eight to six. Gardner Webb back within two. We asked Mike White what keeps you up late at night this time of year before your season opener. And he said, you know, with this team, it's the defense. And where's the vocal leadership going to come from? Timeout on the floor. Eight to six. Our score, David Effiani pulls the running Bulldogs within a basket. of college basketball is brought to you by Aleve Direct Therapy. Get drug-free, deep penetrating, lower back pain relief. And Cabela's. Get to Cabela's for all of your hunting, fishing, and camping needs. Cabela's, it's in your nature. Back here inside of Exact Tech Arena, great to have you with us. And can you believe it? You never know when the camera's on. <laughs> Boy, that was disastrous, that was it right. not? Well, it's great to have you with us. College basketball is back with Brooke Weisbro, Roy Philpott. I wish I could shoot a little bit more effectively, but it is what it is. Meanwhile, here at Florida, they've got championship hopes this season. Brooke, they made the Elite Eight last year. Perhaps a chance to go further this season. What's it going to take for the Gators? They need a little help, and they need some help inside because right now some of their best big guys still out with ACL tears. John Igbunu suffered his uh, last February 14th. He won't be back till January. Isaiah Stokes, he'll be able to be available then. So it's really that part of it that's the missing piece, and that will help them toward the end. Right now it's about getting the young guys to buy into that defensive philosophy. No question about it. And in case you don't remember, and most of the fans here inside of this arena do, last year the chance to go to the Elite Eight, Chris Chioza launches the triple at the buzzer to lift Florida past Wisconsin. And most people forget Florida blew a 12-point lead late. There was some controversy just to get to that point, but Chioza saved the day. Gators would go on to fall to South Carolina with a chance to go to the Final Four. But for Chris Chioza, 
They're going to be talking about that shot for the next 35 years here. Whether he likes it or not. I know he, he get, gets some reference to it every single day, and it, he doesn't want to let that define him. And I totally get that, and it shouldn't. But what a shot. I mean, you think about what makes an NCAA tournament great. He's dribbling full court against Nigel Hayes, one of the best defenders in the Big Ten. Launches from just behind the three and within the leap. Gets almost right to the rim. Incredible athleticism and concentration. And he said it didn't feel real to his teammates surrounding him. And then the moment hit him. What a shot. We asked Mike White today, have you ever tried to attempt that kind of shot <laughs> with that kind of pressure? And he says, you know, I haven't even attempted it. I haven't thought about it. We told him, well, we did. We were 1 for 15 in our efforts. You were. I was over. Inside Brandon Miller, his first basket of the night. And we're tied at eight. Now Gardner Webb pushed Miami on the road Friday night. Hurricanes preseason ranked in the top 15. And it's just a four point game at halftime before the Hurricanes' depth proved to be the difference in the second half. So we'll see if the running Bulldogs have a chance tonight. And out of bounds over to Gardner Webb. We're going to call that a foul. Foul against the Gators. Keith Stone picks up his second. Head coach for Garner Webb, Tim Kraft. You see him in the background. He'll face UCF coming up Wednesday night. and Kind of a paycheck trip here in the Sunshine State. And also a chance to improve your worth before Big South play arrives in about 45 days. Well, and you've got four guys on your team from for Epiani, Johnson, Laster, and Miller. So this is a chance to say, hey, we do play in the state of Florida. We're on television. You know, we, we want to get more Florida guys on the roster. That's exactly what Tim Kraft said. Of course, a graduate of Florida here in 2000. How interesting, too. He was the manager for the baseball team. Wanted to get to basketball, but saw an inroad with baseball and just said, hey, this is my jam. I'm going to stay with this these guys. After the turnover by Cornwall, Gators take over. She owes a sweet feed inside for the dunk. Dorjak Gak connects. Great job by Gak to step into the, the space where the defender had left. So if you come over to play help side after the Chios a drive, good reaction to that. That's why the pass looks so easy. Bulldogs running their motion offense. Epiani outside an open look for Cornwall. Baseline triple off the mark. And then Gak lost it out of bounds. That is the first game that looked like an early season turnover. It sets the quick handoff from the quarterback to the running back that doesn't go smoothly. But there is the great pass from Chioza. He was able to get up and under the defender. Watch his leap here. And then Gak, like I said, just steps right into the pocket to receive the easy bucket. Straight away triple, side rim. That was O'Reilly who was off the mark. Quickly ahead to Gak. And rejected from behind, no whistle. It'll stay with the Gators. So I'm not sure if it was a mishandle of the pass, but ideally you'd like to see Gak keep his arms up that whole time, not give Effiani or anybody else a chance to get after the ball. Ballard thought about it, now Ooh. penetrates. Off the mark, Gak can't connect. No whistle, running Bulldogs take over. Effiani baseline, and a blocking foul against Ballard. Well, the freshman from Atlanta picks up his first. David Effiani, honorable mention, all big self last year, probably their best scorer. I like the way he's played aggressive, I and mean, he's looked for his opportunities to get to the rim. And that's what you have to do against a Florida team. The second you let them set their defense, good luck on getting an uncontested shot. O'Reilly in traffic off the glass and somehow connects. Good body control from Liam O'Reilly. Kept Kulich off on his right hip and able to use his balance to lean into him and then create some space. Season opener for Florida, second game for Gardner-Webb. Kulichov, in and out. And a dangerous spill 
by Chiozzi. He appears to be okay. And I'll tell you what, that was coming fast and furious for us. Yep. Here we are, <laughs> right there. I'm really glad he landed in the open, open space here on the table. Terrific timing. You got the shot, now you got the dive. That was rough. Yeah, we, we have our stage manager to here to our right of us now. You give me the okay? You all right? Okay, she says she's good. Good okay. to go. Everybody the show good. goes on. Woo! Can't go out like that, Roy. First game of the season. That was scary. Effiani, the fadeaway. And the first lead of the night for Gardner Webb. Baseline three, rattles home, Jalen Hudson. Transfer from Virginia Tech, and he's a good shooter. He comes with a quick shot too, Roy. I love the way his feet get set. By the time he catches the ball, he's already ready to shoot. Kulichov just picked up his first personal. Running Bulldogs out of the Big South Conference. Pick fifth in the preseason poll. You see Boiling Springs, North Carolina. They make the CBI two seasons ago, and they've been close the last couple of Big South tournaments, Brooke, reaching the semifinals and then typically losing by a single possession. Those are the ones that hurt the worst. It, it'll keep you up all night thinking, what is one thing I could have done differently? You end up coming up with 1,000, 10,000 if you're a coach. Five to shoot. Effiani, the step back, well short. Outstanding defense by the Gators. You know, he would have been better served to keep that momentum going forward. It took too much effort to do that step back because by the time he got to shooting the ball, his legs weren't under him. You got to try to create some contact, get to the line, chop up this game, make it ugly, and it's only one point game so far. So, Gardner Webb has found their pockets of scoring. Florida, you feel like, is just trying to bust out. From the Behind three. the back, Whoa. outside the Hudson who airballs it. Cornwall off the glass in traffic. Gardner Webb back out in front. Cornwall's got some bounce to him. He's got some speed. He's out of Brooklyn, New York, and came from a great high school, Putnam Science Academy in Connecticut. He played with Hamadou Diallo from the Kentucky squad, so he's he's got some speed and great finish. Well, Kulichov in attack mode right out of the gate here at UF. Offensive glass, that was Hayes. Outside Kulichov again for three. And his first in a Florida uniform, the first of many. So you see Florida working through some kinks. However, the passing, pretty crispy. Little mishandles here and there, but what I like is that they're constantly moving the ball. They're not wasting it by dribbling it, trying to create something off a of pick and roll. There's spacing and there's movement with passes. Gators by two, Cornwall too strong. Shoulder for Chioza looks pretty good. He had the sprained AC joint. It was a game time decision. He's been aggressive and will be again here. Cleared by Laster. And after the second attempt, Gators come out of there with it. No look dish. Hudson inside. And a timeout on the floor for a little cleanup on aisle six. Gators out to an early advantage, 18 to 14. The Virginia Tech transfer with a flush. <laughs> 18 to 14, our score back in Gainesville. Season opener for eighth ranked Florida. Brooke Weisbro, Roy Philpott, and who else would be in the Florida band tonight? But Canyon Barry, top shooter, now has moved on from his SEC basketball career, but was instrumental last season in that run to the Elite Eight. Didn't know he was a man of many talents. It looks like he knows what he's doing, he too. He does. Whether or not he's actually blowing air into that <laughs> trumpet, it's trumpet, right? Doesn't matter. Uh -oh. I, bet, I bet she's pretty good trombone. I'm sorry. Listen, I played the drums for like two seconds. I have no idea. But that's pretty awesome. Now well, the crowd certainly enjoyed it. Meanwhile, Florida in the midst of an 8-2 run in the last two minutes. Well, it's been a good start this year for the SEC in basketball. Conference is yet to lose a game. Still early, but perhaps highlighted by Texas A&M's win at Ramstein Air Force Base over in Germany against West Virginia. 
And it was a game that really wasn't that close. And AM was missing a couple of its best players, Brooke. If you talk to a lot of basketball insiders, they think the SEC could be a league that gets six, maybe seven teams into the dance come March. I think so. I, I think this is the best SEC in the last seven to ten years. I mean, you've got a legit five to six schools that can compete for the SEC title, getting into the NCAA tournament. And this is not just the, the Kentucky Classic all season long. I know fans have begged for some more competition. Florida was certainly up there last year with an Elite Eight appearance, and they are stronger this year. So the SEC is certainly up for grabs. Well, it's going to be a different Florida team. They're perhaps better offensively, not as good on defense. And the triple from the corner, Okaru, connects for the first basket of his young career. Gators with their largest lead at seven. And another turnover for the running Bulldogs as Turner gave it away. Well, you love the festive atmosphere for game one. What I do love is the student section behind us. They had so much life, and these guys are so ready. You know, college basketball has, has been away for too long. Outside to Allen, an open look from 23 and count it. Really calm on the floor tonight, very focused, didn't show any rust, right? In the first couple of minutes, I mean, we're, we got that answer in the first four seconds of the game when he got the alley-oop. Team triple and the response by Nate Johnson, a redshirt freshman from Miami. Werner Webb has proven they can respond with the same aggressiveness that Florida is bringing at them. That's what you want. If you're Tim Kraft, you want to keep this game as close as possible, as competitive as possible. Kivarius Hayes just inside the line, and that was impressive for a big man. He's got range. He's been able to really step out, do some more face up. Turner amongst the trees swatted away, but he'll shoot too. Right, and then at the other end, that's what you get. Hayes with the block, and let's go back to this Kayvon Allen three. Moving without the basketball, terrific follow through. I mean, you just see the catch and the quick release. And noticeably, a stronger guy. I mean, this is a program that takes very seriously, as does most programs, right? Their strength and conditioning. And they certainly do a lot here to make sure that those, 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 those are measured, right? You want to make sure you're lifting more, your body fat's going down, and you see the response. First team all SEC last year. Improved his defense. Mike White wants to see him become a better rebounder and playmaker this year. Mike Okaru picked up his first personal in that sequence. Gators with more substitutions. Chase Johnson checking in for the first time. Freshman out of Ripley, West Virginia. Talking about the gains and losses here in Gainesville. Strength and conditioning coach Preston Green. These are the results that he's had working with Chioza. A gain of 20 pounds, but look at the bench press, and this is all good weight. Meanwhile, Gak, body fat down. Hayes, weight up. Allen, who had a, a terrific sense of ability and athletic ability when he got here, but he only ate Pop-Tarts. So he worked with his diet, got his body fat down from 10% to 5%. Same thing with Keystone. And it's amazing to see what kind of results that's had in practice. And there's Preston Green right there in the middle with the gray suit. Clemson graduates done a fantastic job here at Florida. And how much nutrition pays the price when it comes to your performance on the floor, your sleep, all of that. Two on two, Chioza off the glass. Wild shot and Gak can't connect either. Johnson, baseline, 15-footer on that. Now the one thing Mike White told us tonight I'm not clear about who our vocal leaders are going to be. I don't know if we're going to be able to defend the way that we did last year, but I do know that we can put up about 120 points on any given night. <laughs> we might see it tonight. And the defense was pretty stout right there. Ballard, stutter step, too strong. And Johnson traveled on the offensive glass. <laughs> now 
Well, a fast start for the Gators. A 28 to 19 advantage at Brooke doing it on the defensive end. Great help side. The timing of the block without fouling. And then you've got the fast break after that. But this is what you're going to get. You want to drive to the lane? Welcome to Gainesville. Let's get it. College hoops are here. Big time. Boom. It's number one Duke versus number two Michigan State. Number four Kansas. Battling it out with Kentucky. One nice two blockbuster matchup with the college football playoffs, top 25 in between games. Uh, what a night it's going to be tomorrow night over on ESPN, the State Farm Champions Classic. And you want to talk about Blue Bloods, the pride of college basketball. UK, Duke, KU, Michigan State, Miles Bridges, Marvin Bagley. And that's just the beginning coming up mm -hmm. tomorrow night in Chicago. It is going to be popping in the United Center. I mean, you're right. The biggest brands in college basketball on one stage. When you think about you know, the, the past matchups and the great games that we've had. And here's an interesting stat I came across today. How about Tom Izzo? Do you know what his record is against Coach K? What? One in ten. How about that? One in ten. That's shocking. Yeah, it really is. It really is. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, what Michigan State, Miles Bridges, how he goes up. Maybe he matches up against Grayson Allen. And the sophomores, also Nick Ward on that Michigan State team. And the talent of the Duke freshman. Again, what a great night for college basketball. Well, Bagley has been incredible, but he's just the tip of the iceberg. Coolidge off for three. The Rice transfer continues the hot shooting. He's starting to get comfortable. You know, he came out and missed his few first shots by just a little bit. And you could feel him trying to tweak that shooting motion. Off the steal, here comes Kayvon Allen, the bounce pass, Chioza, Coolidge off with nine, making 12, and three goal is white hot in his debut for UF. Roy, I could feel him setting up for a corner three, and I just wanted to hold my breath just in case it happened. Coolidge off, great footwork, knocks it down. Get ready to get used to that, Gator fans. Well, his nickname in the Florida student section is Three Gore. His real name is Igor Kulichov. Graduate transfer, originally out of Russia. Spent his first couple of seasons in Houston with the Rice House. Was first team all-conference USA last year. And tell you what, you can just feel momentum shifting the second he enters this game. It's as if the Gators increase their speed by another five miles per hour when they're already a fast team. And this is what the pressure defense will do to you. It will force you to turn the ball over when there's barely anything going on. All they got to do is run at you, do a quick closeout, and the pressure is there. Gordon Webb hadn't even initiated their offense before they turned the ball over. Uh, Kulichov wanted to pull the trigger, decided against it. Chioza will. And connect! What a start for the Florida Gators, preseason number eight. Saw its season in in the Elite Eight last year. An 18-point lead in game number one. Not even 14 minutes in. O'Reilly contested. Kulichov, another triple, 15 points in the first half, and he's not done yet. And Tim Kraft has seen enough. Now let's watch the footwork of both Chris Chioza and Kulichov. Both have their feet set before they catch the ball, but Kulichov, my goodness, talk about automatic. This is the reason he was out there shooting an hour before shoot-around. It's the reason he can hit 44 straight threes in practice. The man is a machine in every good way possible. Brooke, that's a 14-0 run for the Gators. Crowd loves it, loves it here on their season opener. 8 of 15 from three-point range. Kulichov, 4 out of 5 by himself.
Well, tonight at 11.30 Eastern after the Dolphins Panthers over on ESPN, tune in to SportsCenter, hosted by the one and only Scott Van Pelt. And also, don't forget, coming up tomorrow at 9, in between those two games in the State Farm Classic, they'll have their big reveal in the college football playoff bowl. Who will be number one? Many think it's going to be Alabama out of the SEC. Triple from the corner by Cornwall is good. And that'll stop Florida's momentum for now. Kulichov, heat check. I believe Gardner Webb went to a 2 3 zone. I don't know if that's the right answer to defense. That's certainly not going to slow down three point attempts. Chiosa skies for the rebound over Epiani. Hudson. Back iron. And that's a traveling violation. Nyongane turns it over, the junior out of France. Six turnovers now for Gardner Webb facing this Florida defense in the first half. That should have been an easy bucket. That was a great recognition of a mismatch. Nyongane couldn't handle the basketball, shuffled his feet, decided on the extra pass when he had the mismatch. Got to be aware of your size, who's guarding you, and how close you are to the rim. There was no reason for that extra pass there. Ballard, fade away. Johnson on the offensive glass, corrals it, and has his pocket picked. Gators get it back, and an over and back will give it back to Gardner Webb. And the running Bulldogs just trying to survive this offensive onslaught in their second game of the season. When you think about the stealing with the speed of Florida, and this is without some of their big guys, too. But it's big. I mean, you're dealing with speed and size on the floor. Gardner Webb just simply not able to respond back with the same amount of force. When they don't have the shooters, they, they don't have the rebounders, and certainly the speed, you just cannot match it. Micah Karu checks back in, Chiosa to the bench. They've been trying to run this weave with the guards to see where they can turn the corner or get a mismatch on the screen and roll. Nope. With the Gators switching defense, it allows them to get closer to the rim. That's a nice move again by Lester. He's Lester, he's been the only offensive answer for this club in the first half. 6'6", great athleticism now with six points this evening. D.J. Laster. Under four to play in a fast-moving first half. Nine to shoot. Bassett. Okaru. Back to Bassett. The drop step and the easy finish. Gators able to keep the floor spread and not waste dribbles on the basketball. Everything was done with a purpose. Back to an 18-point lead, and the runner goes in on a wing and a prayer by Jaheim Cornwall. And a chance for three the hard way when we return here in Gainesville. The seventh annual State Farm Champions Classic comes to you live from the United Center in Chicago. Got four of the top teams in the country. Number one, Duke, squares off with second ranked Michigan State, the early game at 7 Eastern, followed by Kentucky and Kansas. Number seven versus number four. Great night of college basketball, also available streaming live on the ESPN app. And I tell you, UK, the first two games against Utah Valley and Vermont, looked a little vulnerable. Supremely talented, but very young. It's going to take a little bit of time. And tell you what, I like what Jimmy Dykes and Doug Sherman were talking about in that win against the Catamounts of Vermont. Kind of felt like a four versus 13 game in the NCAA tournament. And there's some value to be gained by facing a team that's likely going to win the America East, a conference champion and a veteran squad. And you know what? Kentucky will learn from that kind of win, which was very tough. Those are two early season games I really like from both sides. You've got two teams with experience. UVU and Vermont are going to be gunning for their conference championships. Vermont won it last year. I had the America East Championship. They're strong. You know, and then UVU with experience with all the transfers. Those are good tests for Kentucky as Kayvon Allen hits the three. Because Kentucky is on experience. So they need to play against those type of teams now and learn how to win so that 
when you warm up and you get ready for big guys like Kansas, you, you've had some tough matchups already. But yeah, Kentucky, they're getting there. But the talent is real. Effiani, too strong. Rebound by Ballard. Florida, 9 of 18 from distance. Kulichov, again for three. And he's got 18 points. His average last year at Rice as a first-team all-conference player. Suppose there's a chance he could hit 44 threes in a row also in this game <laughs> instead of just practice. I mean, I have not seen a player look this automatic. And I don't want to throw up a huge comparison, but I mean, Steph Curry's shot looks similar to his. The way that he just catches and releases so quickly. Boy, I'm telling you, it looks like it. Catch. Shot fire, and it's just right there. Well, the First beautiful ball movement as well for the Gators offense. You know, so much unselfishness with this team. How many times have they looked for the next best play? Ulichov is he's going to be a star here. Second personal on DJ Laster for Gardner Webb. It'll put Ballard at the stripe, the talented freshman, a lanky wing. ESPN top 100 player, four star prospect. According to our trusted recruiting colleagues like Paul Biancardi. Does a fantastic job with high school basketball and trying to put together all those rankings each and every year. It's not easy, but I'll tell you what, the ESPN standard is the best. In the evaluation process, I mean, that means time spent in the gym, you know, time that's, that's not on the clock. So you know, Paul Biancardi, one of the best out there to evaluate our next young stars. Epiani gets it back, comes up well short. And a scrum translate into a jump ball. And the arrow favors the running Bulldogs. You impressed by what you've seen so far out of Florida? The shooting, absolutely. The passing, yes. Defense for the most part. I think there have been a few kinks here and there, just some miscommunication. But what I like is that these guys have all played for each other since the tip. There's no, hey, let me get my shot in. I want to be an all-star. It's opening night. Let me let me do me. It's let's do us. Under two to play in the first. Robito lost control. Was hit on the hand. Ten different Gators have scored to your point. They're sharing the wealth tonight. Jalen Hudson picks up his first. Jamal Robito, senior. From Australia, of all places, started 33 games last year. And for Gardner Webb to have a chance in the Big South, he's got to have a big season. The Big South, one of those conferences, Brooke, Coastal Carolina and Cliff Ellis used to play in that league, and it's a one big conference typically. The NCAA tournament always has been. There have been some teams to come out of that league that have put a scare into teams in first round games. Coastal Carolina, Virginia a few years ago. Right. UNC Asheville has done it a number of times. They actually pulled off an upset. And you know, Winthrop's another team, terrifically coached. They've, they've been good since the Greg Marshall days. Yeah. When I played at Coastal Carolina, Greg Marshall and the Winthrop Eagles were the standard of excellence on the men's side. And Liberty took over that side on, on the women's front. So for Gardner Webb, they're, they're they're still trying to find their their toughness, and they're trying to get past those one possession losses in the semifinals here and there. And those you got to figure out what are the little things we're not doing right in practice every day that will then spill into the game and make the difference. Well, back to the basket game. Kulichov off the glass, the sweet kiss. He's got 20. So you get an understanding of the type of scorer that he is, which is a smart one. He's not just going to shoot threes. He's going to move off the ball. He's going to be able to take you in off the dribble. He's got some strength to him. The little guys, he can body you up and get close to the rim. Big guys, he's got great footwork and speed, so he can get away from you. He's going to be a problem, a matchup nightmare, not only in the SEC, but looking down the line, Gators in an NCAA tournament, and he gets hot. Wow. Foul when it gets hot, so that's his second. Don't forget, coming up at halftime. Recap of the first 20 minutes here in Gainesville, plus a fast break with Chris Chiosa and our Seth Greenberg. We look forward to that. All that and much more headed your way moments from now. David Effiani at the strike. Shot 72% last season, and now we'll get the bonus.
Epiani with five, one of two at the line. And approaching a minute to play. Corner triple. Kulich off on the offensive glass. Yeah. Kulichov was the last guy down on that fast break, by the way, and the first guy to grab the rebound. And that's the kind of hustle he possesses. And number four in white, looking a little winded. Ten to shoot. And you know what's happening here. Kulichov attacking off the glass. And one. Going for a single game record here, first night out. Timing collects himself. The footwork takes the contact, finishes. And does a volleyball roll at the end things. It's like yeah. just style points at that, at that. Absolutely. You know, just adding on. The Agane picked up his first personal. Meanwhile, Kulichov with 23 points in this first half. And Florida leads big. Florida shooting 48% from three. They're already 10 for 21. Less than a second differential between the game and shot block. O'Reilly inside. Nyangane connects. Three seconds remaining. Chioza will push. Well, that's a familiar shot. And he comes up just short. But what a first half for the Florida Gators. Igor Kulichov, 23 points, five of seven from distance. And he is the story in this season opener for number eight, Florida. He said, I believe I can help this team, whatever my role turns out to be. Shoot that three, young man. That's what your role needs to be. Gators lead by 23 and well on their way in their first game here in 2017. on ESPN. Start of our second half between the eighth-ranked Florida Gators and Gardner-Webb. Florida out to a commanding 23-point advantage. Oh, great to have you with us as always alongside of Brooke Weisbrod, Roy Philpott, courtsided. What a start for UF. The offense, the defense, really everything clicking after trailing 14-13 to 13 early. Three big runs to create all this separation. It took just uh, four seconds for the Gators to start their season off with a bang. Kayvon Allen got an alley-oop. And then Kulichov comes in a few minutes later, and once he got loose, and once he got a comfortable on the floor, boy, watch out. This man has lit it up tonight, 23 points, 5 of 7 from 3. He scored in a couple of ways, mostly threes, but he's been able to move without the basketball, put the ball on the floor, create some space. Here's a great move here, up and under with the finish. He's incredibly athletic, not limited to that three-point shot. And what a catch for Mike White. Transfer from Rice, the 23 points, four rebounds, four assists. Stuff in the stat sheet, and this is exactly what Mike White wanted to see from him. Meanwhile, Kayvon Allen had a pretty good first half as well, but a very quiet nine points after what Igor was able to do. Now, Kayvon Allen is going to be a playmaker this year, so he'll be able to shoot shots, but he's going to be served in a point guard role much more this year. You see the Gators, the way that they've been able to space the floor. Jalen Hudson knocks down a couple of threes in the first half transfer from Virginia Tech and then Allen extending his range what I really like is the unselfishness of the Florida Gators 14 assists Roy in that first half we take a look at our sales game track you see the numbers for Kulichov rest of the team also shooting fairly well from distance second chance points outscoring Gardner Webb 13 nothing so doing a really good job on the boards and some of those turnovers Florida was able to cash in on fast break opportunities as well. So, a picture perfect start. One caveat is this, sometimes you get hot shooting for distance in the first half. That can become fool's gold where you fall in love with a three-pointer. That's not what Mike White wants in these final 20 minutes, you have to think. But he's playing small. You know, until you get Yannick Lou back in the lineup, until you get Isaiah Stokes in the post, this is a team that's probably gonna go with a four-guard lineup.
Kulichov back to the basket, jump hook, rattles it home. He's got 25. Gators went on runs of 11-0, 14-0, and 8-0 after trailing by a point with 12.04 remaining in the first 20 minutes. Another turnover. Chioza directing traffic. Allen, the runner. And tapped out by Hayes. Over to the running Bulldogs. Bulldogs unable to even establish a simple post pass to then turn into a shot attempt. We saw that many times in the first half, just simply from the pressure alone that Florida puts on you, resulted in a few unforced turnovers. Effiani in traffic, high off the glass with the bounce. And a chance for three the hard way for David Effiani, the redshirt junior from Orlando. Effiani's had to work really hard to get in the paint. Good stop and change of direction there. Great job to keep his balance when all his momentum's going forward. Look at that. He almost lost his footing there. I'm glad he didn't injure his knee. Yeah. Foul went against Kivarius Hayes, his first. Mike White told us today he's kind of the vocal leader of this bunch. Mm -hmm. A team filled with quiet superstars. It may be Hayes provides that much needed leadership glue. What they really like is how consistent he's become. And that he ha hasn't had a bad practice basically since he's been here at school, meaning the effort and intent has always been there. No look bounce pass by Chioza was kicked. Gardner Webb now operating with their zone defense. Use this a little bit against Miami in their season opener, Brooke, just to give the Hurricanes a different look. It worked for about a half, not so much in the second. And that's where you run into limited options. And you go down to these conferences that are smaller, Big South, you've got your weapons, you've got some size, you just don't have a lot of tools. Jalen Hudson now with seven. Versus a Florida team where Mike White says, hey, when things are right, I want to have nine potential starters on my team to be able to make great rotations. High low action, down low, Laster rejected out of nowhere. Shot clock did not reset, five to shoot. Laster the jump hook, and another basket inside. He has eight. Down low, a foul against Gardner Webb. Robito will pick up his first. Darius Hayes, just the fourth Gator in history to block 60 shots in a season. Terrific timing. Bodies up, doesn't foul. The second attempt good by DJ Laster. Gators will inbound. Preseason ranked number eight. Picks second in the SEC preseason poll. For the record, I pick Florida number one. I'm feeling a little bit better about that tonight, although it is early. It's a bold move, boy. Well, I just think Kentucky is so young, and we'll see. They always are, it feels like. Step back off the mark by Stone, and a shot clock violation. Gators will turn it over. And what a great career it's been for Mike White. Coach of the year last year in the conference. Intense, successful, respected by his players, and still a young rising star. I mean, he's just, what, 40 years old. Incredible to have the kind of accomplishments and work ethic he's had, and I, I think this community knew what kind of star they were getting when he came here on campus. He's proven it. Off the miss by Robito, Chioza in traffic draws the foul. And Chris Chioza will shoot a pair. Weiss Father, the uh, athletic director at Duke, former coach at Louisiana Tech, kind of got his start there. And has done a phenomenal job here at Florida, leading his team to the Elite Eight last year. Their last game, the loss against South Carolina with a chance to go to the Final Four, it was back and forth until the final two and a half minutes. And he just ran into a red-hot Frank Martin squad with Cinderius Thornwell and fell victim late. 
Different team this year, but they're expecting similar results. Two great defensive teams, South Carolina and Florida. And yeah, the difference in that game, the X Factor, Sendarius Thornwell, he was a superman. He just couldn't be stopped. Laster for three. Well, short. That may have been blocked. Neongane can't connect. And out of bounds, back to the Gators. Florida basketball. And here comes Chioza. Did not start tonight. Came off the bench. He's expected to maintain that starting spot this year. But with a sprained AC joint, it was a game time decision if you're just tuning in. And you see his left arm. He's got that full sleeve and versus just the short sleeve on his right side. So it was that left shoulder that he's been trying to recover. Extra padding maybe on the elbow. Not sure how, how that helps him, but never gets him to get some shots in and be in the game to what matters. Well, tomorrow over on ESPN, we'll have the seventh annual State Farm Champions Classic live from the United Center in Chicago for the top teams in the country. Duke and Michigan State will lead things off at 7 Eastern. And then seventh ranked Kentucky, number four KU at 9.30. Great night of college basketball, also streaming live on the ESPN app. 63-37. Score tells the story here in Gainesville for Florida's season opener. And Effiani from the elbow. One of the first clean looks that he's had. And what I like is the mid-range jump shot. I think there are so many options available to players when they take advantage of it. Be a foul. Robito picks up his second, excuse me, bro. Well, Defiani, just, just to put the point on it, is he doesn't have to work to get to the rim every single time. If you can get by that first defender with the screen, you've got a foot or two at least until the next defender steps up for help side. Start hitting some of those short-range jump shots, it can at least chip away at this dent that they got to try to climb, try to climb out of. Now this is what you love about Igor Kulajov. Five of seven for three-point range. He's now been to the free throw line four times after this attempt. He's been perfect thus far. Four rebounds. He's dropped five dimes this evening as well. So I mean, not only is he making shots, but he's also distributing the basketball, showing outstanding court vision, and he's tough around the glass without a turnover. Zero turnovers. Robito well short on the triple. Gators will push. Coolidge off the push off. No whistle. Corner three. Keith Stone in and out. And a tumble inside. Hayes appears to be all right. A well, timeout on the floor. Kiberius Hayes, vocal leader of this team, takes a tumble. Well, the biggest early season tournament in college basketball history gets underway next week, the week of Thanksgiving. PK80 is going to be held in Portland, Oregon, celebrating the 80th birthday of Knight co founder Phil Knight. Florida Gators will be playing. In the motion bracket, they'll open up against Stanford, 10 o'clock over on ESPN2. That game will be Thanksgiving night. 16 teams in all participating in this year's PK-80. And some of the best teams in the country, including Duke, North Carolina, Michigan State, Oregon, these Florida Gators, Gonzaga, Ohio State, Oklahoma, and the list goes on and on. It's going to be a great week of college basketball next weekend and all week long, really, up in Portland. That's the kind of beast I'm talking about. Four games in a day. Mm. Give me them all. Well, so many teams, they had to separate it into two brackets, the motion bracket and the victory bracket. Corner triple on the way, and it's good from Cornwall. Five minutes into the second half, it is all Florida. The Gators season opener. Kayvon Allen comes up short. Epiani the board. And Effiani coast to coast, rejected by Gak. Look out for Kulichov. Well, he's kind of a throwback player. Off the glass, and why not? 29 points. Or you can just feel him just egging on the defender further and further into the post. He 
and you felt that step back, turn around shot. I mean, you can sense what shot is coming, and I don't think you can stop it. Not at this point. Gardner Webb does not have the tools tonight. It's going to take a bigger, stronger, faster defender to slow down Kulichov. 10 to shoot. O'Reilly with a bounce pass inside. It'll stay with Gardner Webb. Let's go back to this ball movement again from Florida. And there's Jalen Hudson, transfer from Virginia Tech, can score many ways. And look, fade away, bodying up the strength, the light finish. You tell me what kind of damage this guy's going to do with the SEC. Kulichov, <laughs> right on cue. 32 points, six three pointers tonight. Okay, it's early. It's against Gardner Webb. This isn't against Duke. However, is my comparison for Steph Curry off at all? I mean, is that a stretch? I'm not going to argue with anything you say about right. this guy so you know far. I mean, look at the way he shoots. He's able to score in three different ways tonight. I mean, that's off the mark, but his shot looks so wooden rhythm. He's a, he's a robot, but he's able to shoot it. That's what you want for a good shooter. The same exact release every single time. After the save by Stone, Gat connects for the chippy. His first basket, and it is all Florida here in Gainesville. 74-42, Igor Kulichov is red hot with 32 points in his debut with the Gators. Let's get it. College troops are here, big time. Boom. It's number one Duke versus number two Michigan State. Number four Kansas. Battling it out with Kentucky. One nice two blockbuster matchup with the college football playoffs, top 25 in between games. Well, what a night it's going to be tomorrow evening in the United Center. Miles Bridges was told by Tom Izzo, hey, you need to go to the NBA. And he said, you know what? I don't want to go. I'm coming back to East Lansing. Spartans are going to be better for it. And you've got those four sophomores that are just so good at what they do individually. The team, I, I think, is the best in college basketball. Marvin Bagley, Kentucky, all these youngsters may have something to say. Florida may have something to say by the time it's all said and done. But there are so many compelling stories this year, Brooke, in the sport outside of what happened in the offseason. Stars, veteran stars, young talent, great coaching. It's going to be a lot of fun this season. Yeah, you've got a lot of mix of different types of teams, right? So you've got the young, the Dukes out there, the Kentucky is a little more experienced with Michigan State, and a lot of new players that will be stars. And, and we're waiting to see still if, if Michael Porter Jr., his hip injury, will he be able to come back? And what will he be this year for Missouri? He's a guy that could easily be one and done and has talked about how much he wants to contribute to Missouri before he leaves. Tigers are going to be a force in the SEC and maybe these top ten rankings by the time the season reaches an end. And you see North Carolina, the defending champs at number nine, Duke and Bagley, the number one team going back to the preseason poll. A couple of free throws for Okaru after the foul by Effiani. You tell me who you like from those top ten programs there we just saw. I like Michigan State. I yeah. like Michigan State and Duke. You know, you've got the experience there, Izzo with the coaching, and, and I really like Bridges. I mean, he's such a strong player, a team guy. He's got some depth you know, to support him, work in the lineup and on the bench. And I mean, how can you doubt Marvin Bagley Jr.? The third, excuse me. I mean, it's, it's freakish the way that he's able to create things that just make your jaw drop on the floor. Well, DJ Laster did everything he could trying to create the turnover and then gave it right back with his third personal after the push off. Well, Kulichov heads to the bench. Chioza checks back in. I've been racking my brain trying to figure out who he reminds me of. And he just has a rare skill set to be such an outstanding shooter, to be physical, and also to have outstanding court vision. Okaru for three. So his first triple goes down. Make that his second, and he's got eight. Kulichov, maybe a, a bigger Jimmer for dead. I mean, right, he's kind of his own guy right now. He yep. can shoot, he can rebound, he's assisting, he can defend. 
who is that guy before him? Now, Fournette's not going back to the basket in the post and grabbing offensive rebounds. Yeah. Kulichov has done that and then some this evening. 6'5", what an interesting story. Born in Russia, and he was raised in Israel. He was the high school in Florida. He can speak three languages. Spent time both in the Israeli military and on the Israeli national team. So he's got worldly experience. And having lived in a few different countries, traveled so much, been in very high stressful situations that have nothing to do with basketball, you can imagine what kind of maturity level he has when he comes here. Cornwall, deep triple, side rim. Here comes Chioza. It's been all Gators after trailing 14 to 13. The attempted alley of Okaru climbed the ladder, but was fouled in the process. And that was headed to be a Sports Center top 10 moment. It had potential. Kayvon Allen with a 39 inch vertical. Well, how about Okaru? Just an inch behind there, 38. Can't punch it in. Inside Exact Tech Arena, you're watching the SEC on ESPN. Rick Weisbro, Roy Philpi. Don't forget, coming up tomorrow at 9 Eastern over on ESPN, we'll have the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff top 25 rankings. Right in between the Champions Classic games at United Center, Duke, Michigan State at 7, UKKU at 9, and of course, streaming live on the ESPN app, the Big Talk in SEC country. Bama figures to move up to the number one spot. Georgia figures to tumble outside of the top four. And Auburn now in control, many believe, of its postseason destiny, even with two losses. Tigers will get Alabama in the Iron Bowl to end the year. I know this isn't safe to say where I am right now, but all I can think about is turnover chain. How about <laughs> Miami? That's right. Putting it to Notre Dame. Oh, my goodness. You felt in the beginning of that game. Oh, man. This this could be close, right? In that first turnover, you thought, mm, no, nah, this is actually going to be a long night <laughs> for the Fighting Irish. Oh, boy, it was. After the steal by Chase Johnson, number one in white for Florida, Gators take over, leading by 38. Sweet look inside. Okaru couldn't hang on to it. Now, the big story tonight, if you're just tuning in, Igor Kulichov. 32 points on the bench currently. The Florida debut record. Got to go all the way back to 1962. Tom Baxley broke port in 34. Kulichov with a chance to break that here this evening. We still have 11 minutes left in this second half. He could smash that record. But team-wise, 80 points for Florida. I'm not even halfway through the second half yet. Now, do I think they've cooled off? Yeah, a little bit. Kulichov back in to warm things back up. Gore is the greatest nickname for him. You can't get much better than that. What I wonder is, how come he didn't talk Jalen Hudson into giving him number three? Like, how are you going to wear number four when your nickname three is three Gore? That's right. <laughs> well, after tonight, maybe that changes. I don't know. Right? I mean, either Jalen will say, what a, what a performance. Let me honor you with this number three. Or, hey, buddy, how about you do my laundry for a month? We'll see what happens. I don't think that's how it works, Brooke, <laughs> but I, I, I like the creativity. I'm just going to give you my number. Laster with a couple of free throws, 80 to 44. This Gardner Webb team tested Miami in the first half Friday night for the hurricane season opener. Canes are preseason number 12. They have not tested the Florida Gators tonight. Against the zone. 10 to shoot, Kulichov. Free throws coming up. And a chance right here to tie the all-time mark for a Florida debut. Hey, Johnson picks up his first personal. Kulichov has been perfect at the strike in four attempts. With that free throw, he ties Tom Baxley. 34 points. And in case you're wondering, his career high at Rice was 35, so a point away from tying that mark. So, right, what I'm looking for right now, if I'm
around Mike White with this big of a lead is who of my guys are out there communicating? Who's talking when we've got this kind of lead? Could easily win this game right now and put it away without even putting in an extra effort, right? But that's when it counts, is moments like this. When the game is decided, where still can you get better? Andre Ballard now with four. O'Reilly was blocked trying to attack the baseline by Dante Bassett. That's an example right there. Take the mid-range jump shot. O'Reilly gets past his first defender and instead tries to get all the way to the rim and runs right into Bassett. Pull up for the floater. You know, Mike White told us today, this team can get 120 points on any given night playing the right kind of squad. They're on pace for close to that number with 84 halfway through the second half, Brooke. He really wasn't sugarcoating what this offense is going to be capable of. And I think you'll see even more discipline on the offense from Florida. Trying to keep that spacing. You want to run your sets the best way you can. Again, not use the rest of this time just to show off. Riley. Liam O'Reilly, the senior from Austin, Texas. Second basket of the night. Impressive start for the eighth-ranked team in the country, Florida. Laster comes out of there with it. Effiani, a little Euro step. O'Reilly outside draws the contact. Cornwall was hacked as Bassett picks up his third person. Substitution for Florida, number 13, Tavarius Hayes. Now really the only thing to try to figure out here down the stretch. How many players can Mike White get off of his Florida bench? And can Igor Kulichov break his career high? He's playing at Rice. The only player for the Florida Gators to not score tonight has been Keith Stone. Everybody else in the Gator uniform able to get on the scoreboard against Tampa. They had 10 players score six or more. So great balance to this team this year. And obviously very unselfish. 19 assists on the night. Epiani too strong, but Laster is there to clean it up. He's got 12 to go along with eight rebounds. Spin move by Okaru is out. Halfway down in the process. Better nine to play in the second half and the jam. DJ Laster with a spark. He's been ready to play this game. He was the only offensive answer for Gardner Webb early in the first half. Rookie now has a double double with 14 points and 10 boards. And really the lone bright spot for Gardner Webb. Short was Allen, and a foul on the rebound. DJ Laster, 14 and 10, stuffing the stat sheet. Quick hesitation, he just lifted his head just a bit, eyes on the rim. It's just enough to get Kibarius Hayes to bite on the shot fake. And instead of just running into traffic, throwing his hands up, hoping for a foul, he finished with a strong dunk. Laster just picked up his fourth personal. Meanwhile, Chris Chioza with that sprained AC joint directly behind the Gators bench. That could be an ongoing story to watch in the early part of this season to see if that shoulder can remain healthy. 85 to 50. Hayes the steal. Hudson will shoot two. Well, Jalen Hudson, the transfer from Virginia Tech, sat out last season. Rookie played in 67 games in Blacksburg. He's got great length, can score, really good shooter. He's going to give this team some much needed toughness. Well, Mike White said that he's instant offense. He's got a lot to prove defensively. Certainly, if you're going to play for Mike White, you got to know how to play defense, and you got to want to play defense. 
But what's great about Hudson is the year that he used to sit out, he also used to get in the weight room to get strong. We mentioned the guys on this team have bought into the strength and conditioning program. Jalen Hudson really wanted to get stronger. He wanted to come in and be an instant spark for this team. When you've got that year to practice, to lift, it stinks when you're not playing in game action. I totally get that. But it gives you an opportunity to get better. Find those areas that were weak in your game and spend that entire year working on it. Too strong for Johnson. Okaru, a little up and under and one. Oh, what a future numeral zero is going to have in white here in Gainesville. Mike Okaru, a four-star prospect with the Euro step and the nice finish. Great concentration on the rip. Now the eighth ranked team in the country playing like it for its season opener, all Florida. Back here in Gainesville, Brooke and I were telling you more about Jalen Hudson. Junior transfer from Virginia Tech, set out last season with Brooke with the Hokies. Poured in a career high 32 points in this ACC tournament win against Wake Forest, so he has that kind of spurtability, if you will, and he's going to be a welcome addition this year in Gainesville. Out of Richmond, Virginia, played in 67 games for the Hokies. And it'll be very curious to see how his season unfolds. He has two years of eligibility left, 10 points tonight to go along with a couple of assists, four of six from the floor. And I think he's adding experience, he's adding a an array of scoring techniques. And that's really what we've seen from a bunch of different Gators tonight. It's not just the three-point shot that, that you're accustomed to seeing them taking, right? It's not uncommon to see the Gators attempt 33s a game. You've got that, but now you have guys like Jalen Hudson, Kayvon Allen, Igor Kulichov, Mike Okaru, Chris Chioza. All of them are capable of putting the ball on the floor, scoring from mid-range or getting all the way to the rim. So when you have those weapons, do you know how hard it is for the defense to stay in front of you, to not sag into the post, and then recover out to kick it to the wings. Over and back as Miller sent it too deep to Effiani on the carol. Back to the Gators. Florida picked second in the preseason SEC media poll, trailing only Kentucky. Texas A&M expected to be much improved this year. We saw that in the Aggies win against West Virginia over at Ramstein Air Force Base in Germany last week. Had teams like Mississippi State, South Carolina made the Final Four last year. Gamecocks expected perhaps to take a step or two back, losing Dozier and Sedarius Thornwell. We'll see. A lot of people expect the SEC could send five, six, maybe seven teams to the big dance in March. We'll find out. Florida most likely will be one of those programs. Here's a steal. O'Reilly. Two on one. And Biani. And an acrobatic move there at the rim with a chance for three. That was some incredible athleticism and concentration. Oh, my goodness. Biani on the catch. The contact. You see his eyes never leave the rim. I thought he was going to try to dunk that at first and well, almost in midair. He changed his mind. I think Keith Stone helped change his mind, too. Stone just picked up his third. Under seven to play. <laughs> Off the glass, Chase Johnson. Freshman out of West Virginia. Went through concussion protocol a couple of days ago. Now healthy and playing well. Brandon, right into the body of Brandon Miller. Yep. And Chase Johnson, another player here who's put time in the weight room. He's gained 10 pounds of muscle. Mike White calls him a relentless worker. And for the Gators, who've been able to play up front, Gardner Webb, the posts are playing behind him. It makes those bounce passes into the post very easy. And the future looks bright here for Florida. And Isaiah Stokes will be returning from his ACL injury in January, as will John Igbunu. Freshman three are in the top ESPN 100. Mike White doing a stellar job. 
as are his assistants on the recruiting trail. O'Reilly amongst the trees, sends it outside, Effiani. Beautiful ball movement, and Robito draws the contact. We'll see if that's a two or a three. Keith Stone came crashing down. That'll be his fourth. Gorjak Gak off the Gators bench. Keith Stone's have a, having a difficult night to try to get in the right defensive position. Another look at this foul here. And it'll be a two. Good job by Robito. It will be a three. I thought I saw the official hold up just two fingers. Robito, 79% from the stripe last year, the veteran wing and long range specialist. Makes the second of three. Johnson and Gack back in as Stone and Hayes check out. Hey, Mike White looks like he can still play some basketball, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Really good guard at Ole Miss from 95 to 99. Change up his nutrition as well. Took the advice of Preston Green. They've been using a, a system that actually is tracked through a wristband that you wear on your arm. It's called the Whoop system. Hudson splashes in a triple. About that one. And the Whoop system is able to count 100 data points per heartbeat. And it also is able to track what foods your body has allergic reaction to. Mike White realized he had been eating eggs, bagels, things like that for breakfast. His body wasn't reacting the right way to it, so we changed it. Now he does chicken and cashews for breakfast, which sounds disgusting, but it That's works awful. for him. Good job, uh, Mike White. You're right. better than us. So it's it's tweaks here and there. You know, a couple of guys on the team, Ballard, Gack, both had reactions to dairy, so they cut those out of their diet. A jam by Ballard right on cue. The easiest basket of the night for Florida. So the head coach participates in the nutritional expertise that his players do. You don't hear about that too often. On the other end, Brandon Miller, the dunk. It's so pretty the, impressive. Right, so the difference it makes it is not just your clothes fitting better, right? And it's not just, hey, I lost a few pounds here and there. Mike White was telling us for the first time in a while he ate pizza, and he said he slept, what, 12 or 14 hours the next day. Hudson with the hot hand now in the second half, the Virginia Tech transfer. He's got 16. So the performance levels of the Gators, all dependent on nutrition, hard work, practice, the weight room, all of those factors that they play in. 14 three-pointers tonight. Ballard had a foot on the line, or it would have been 15. And Gardner-Webb head coach Tim Kraft has seen it up again. The Gators over 100 points in their season opener. <laughs> 101 to 59, Hudson the sweet dish, Ballard the finish. It is all Florida here in Gainesville. Great week of basketball coming up next week for Feast Week on the ESPN Networks. Told you about PK80 earlier tonight. The Avocare Invitational down in Orlando. It's going to have some nice talent down there. Trusted colleague and our producer this evening, Greg Pike, will be assisting in bringing you that one. Maui Jim, Maui Invitational out in Hawaii. It's going to be a lot of fun next couple of weeks, really all season long, as basketball is back. Good feeling, and, and the holiday tournaments are always a good time to see some of the big name matchups early on. Get a sense for them. You know, football fans, buy in. That's my advice this year. Buy like in. That. We've got a great season. Not. It doesn't just start in March. Start watching now. Well said. Deep triple. Eric Jamison. Gators back to work on offense, already over the century mark. Florida trailed early in this one, 14-13. Ballard will send that one home. He almost threw that basketball down towards the rim. He was so high. O'Reilly in traffic. 
Ballard at 6'5", his wingspan looks to me almost like it's 6'9", 6'10". Well, Lasters had a strong evening, the lone bright spot for Gardner-Webb. That'll yeah. continue here. 14 points, 10 rebounds, does have four fouls, but shoot a pair. Foul went against Bassett, his fourth, and the chants have begun from the Florida student section. They've been loud all night asking for the walk-ons, Matt Krause and Drew Faber. Check that foul. Under four to play Ballard. And a foul inside will go against the Gators. And Bassett just fouled out. We've seen two of the big players here for Florida, Stone and Ballard, get into foul trouble. And in a game like this, obviously, it doesn't matter. But when you're thin at the post and you look ahead to your schedule, you're going to need the big guys in. And this was something that Mike White was very concerned about was early season foul trouble, trying to get his post players to know that they don't have a lot of subs, to know they don't have a lot of fouls to get. You have to get them in better shape. You have to get them ready. But when the big guys return, Igbunu, Stokes will be able to be in the lineup that you can still add that same level of aggressiveness as a starter to give, give you valuable, valuable minutes without fouling. John Igbunu, the senior from Nigeria, leading returning rebounder, should be cleared in January. His last missed the second of two. Three and a half to play here in Gainesville. Mukaru off. Johnson can't connect. And the putback finally Johnson. by Johnson himself, and he has seven. Another turnover by Gardner Webb, number 14. McBoonu on the bench. You know, when he went out last year, it actually helped develop better depth in the post for Florida, but when he comes back this go around, He's going to provide an infusion of physicality, shot blocking, rebounding. And you know he's going to be hungry having to sit out this past year. No doubt. And that includes the time he sat out as a transfer coming over from USF. He still gets on the board. First points of the night for the 6'8 sophomore. of spirit you hear behind us here in the broadcast booth. Matt Krause getting set to check in. One of two walk-ons here for this Florida program. I would imagine he'll come in and shoot a three. This crowd's going to go nuts. An early season experience. The guys who come to practice every day. They're on the, the scrimmage squad, the scout teams. They never get any playing time. So what a relief for Florida to see some of the walk-ons to get in. Laster for three, and he rattles that one home. Laster's got 17. Gators trying to go over 110 points. Stone baseline. Krause thought about it. Johnson rejected at the rim that draws the contact. If you're Matt Krause and you get that kind of look, Come on. you, you got to pull the trigger, don't you? You're not going to have a lot of chances this year to do it, so you might as well take them now. Look, that's exactly what the officials probably saying right now. Hey, buddy, take that shot next time. <laughs> hey, Carl Hess was giving him his own personal coaching. You can't blame him for trying to be unselfish now. If I'm getting there, I'm, I'm launching it from well, mid-court. That's because it's you, Roy. <laughs> We're talking about a team player right here. That I am not. <laughs> Approaching two to play. The only drama in Gainesville this evening. We'll both walk on, see the floor. And Miller. Contested layup, tips it out. 
Now Florida's been as impressive as the score would indicate if you're just tuning in. Five on the shot clock. Laster nearly traveled up and under and off the glass. He's got 19. Laster's had a nice showing tonight. Ballard attacking and spins it home. No quitting the Gators. And just like that, here comes Andrew Fava. A freshman from Baltimore making his Florida debut. The first game of the season. Gotta love it. Those early mornings, those late nights, the study tables, they make it all worth it. Just give me two minutes of action. And can 14 or 22 find the basket? And a nice finish that time by Jaheim Cornwall. You've got to think Okaru is going to look to drive and dish. you got to set him up, don't you? There's yeah. a foul. Okaru will shoot a couple. Well, your assessment on where Florida sits in the SEC pecking order. I voted them number one in my preseason ballot. Kentucky was voted the favorite, and you certainly understand why. Texas A&M, Alabama is expected to be an improved squad this year. In your opinion, yeah. you've seen a lot of these teams talk to a lot of the players. What are you thinking for Mike White's squad? I think Florida right now is the deepest, most experienced team. You know, 306 starts amongst their players. That's the best in the SEC. Then you look at Kentucky, their average age is 19.4 years old. So the difference in experience is incredible. The talent level, you know, once it gets into tournament time, you're talking about a whole season's worth of experience. Right now, Kentucky's freshmen getting used to the speed of the game. They were in high school six months ago. So try to get used to that and to see how much better Tyler Davis and Robert Williams are at Texas A&M, what kind of presence they're going to give in the post. Can they get support? from their guards. You know, what is Michael Porter Jr. going to do at Mizzou? A lot of compelling questions in the SEC. I really like Colin Sexton at Alabama. You saw Kentucky in Lexington on Friday. Fava in the paint. Battle the wraparound. Nice yes. bounce pass from Fava in the athletic circus finish. You saw the Wildcats Friday. Yes. They're young. They're going to be a lot better come March. We know that. I would be very curious to see that team square off with this team. And a fadeaway. Cornwall's played very well here in the final couple of minutes. He's got 18. The instruction from Coach Cow to his players a lot of in that night was just buy in. Give me five guys with effort defensively. Start to finish. That's all it's going to take. Kentucky's pretty good. That's going to do it. Here in Gainesville, Florida, 116 to 74. An impressive start for the nation's eighth-ranked program, the Florida Gators. I think what I like most, Troy, is the 26 assists. Incredibly unselfish basketball tonight from the Gators. Igor Kulichov in his Gators debut pours in 34 points, tying the all-time record with Tom Baxley, who did it back in 1962. Jalen Hudson, the transfer from Virginia Tech, scored 16. Three players in double figures overall, as Michael Carru also had 13. And then everybody else chipped in when they had the opportunity, bro. And this is without your best big guys. So Florida, gonna get better and stronger. They're fast, they love to shoot the three. If you're watching this team right now and you're an opposing coach, Better double team number four. Kulichov came to play. Gators will improve to 1 0. Gardner Webb, the running Bulldogs out of the Big South, will fall to 0 and 2 after losing their season opener Friday night at number 11, Miami. Well, a great start for Florida here at home. An impressive win. Final score once again 116 to 74. Coming up next, Louisville City FC versus Swope Park Rangers in United Soccer League action. For Brooke Weisbrot, I'm Roy Philpott saying good night from Gainesville.